Hey, good morning to you. Good to see y'all today. How y'all doing? Pretty good? There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Amen. Let's go ahead and jump up on our feet. Amen. Let's have church this morning. Got a few away today in the band, but that's all right because some others have popped up there with us today. Amen. But, uh, man, everybody needs some time off or a break or something like that. So we just are glad that uh, we have people serving the Lord today. Amen. What's the first song we're going to start out with, son? Take Me Back to Church. Oh, I love that song. Amen. Amen. It's coming up in just a bit. Had a big day yesterday here. Had a big uh, funeral here yesterday. And uh, you have funerals that are short and you have some that are long have some that don't have meals and all that, some that do. And this was one of those that had everything. But that's okay, because we were a blessing, and uh, we actually had a pretty good crowd, and it's like having church on Saturday. It was fine. Amen? So uh, I'm not, I thought I'd be wore out from it, and uh, actually I think it gave me a kick in my step. You know? Probably about 1 o'clock it's going to be eh, like this. But anyway, but I'm glad you're here today. Pretty good crowd in uh, May, and... Not a, lot of whole, not, not a lot of snowbirds left around here, you know, so if you're hunting them, you can't. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> I'm not seeing any. But anyway, if it's your first time I'm Pastor Gary, I don't talk this way just to be funny. I actually talk this way. Yeah, I'm from the country. I was on a plane the other night, and uh, there at the airport, and met a fella and he was from a little old mountain town where I have some property up in a little old place. You wouldn't even know the place exists. And I said, where are you going to? He said, Rotunda West. He said, my mom and daddy lived there. I thought, well, that's funny right there. And uh, I said, well, you ever seen that old crazy church there, that thing in the middle? He yes, asked, sir, I saw that thing going up. I said, well, I said, believe it or not. I said, I pastor that. No. <laughs> and he knows I'm from Rockingham. He couldn't believe me down here doing anything any good <laughs> from Rockingham. But the Lord, if the Lord loved me, he'll love you. You hear me or not say. If he'll use me, he'll use you. So anyway, I'm glad you're here today. You might, this might be your first time. I've met several men today, particularly, that you've been coming for a few weeks now. Guys, I want you to know, I love men and women, listen. But I especially, I especially, I especially have a fondness toward men who come to church. You hear me or not? Because I grew up thinking, you know, who goes, sissies go to church. You know, that wasn't a man thing. I was an idiot, okay? God loves us. He gave his son so we could have everlasting life, man. And so I just love you coming today. I love all of you being here, amen? This is fantastic. I'm glad you're here. You feel welcome? I hope so. Good. Let's thank God we live in America, and don't give up on your country. Don't give up on your country. Last time I checked, you still live here. Yes or no, amen? Let's do it again. Let's thank the Lord. We still live here, okay? And we're going to keep living here. Y'all hear me or not? Say, let's don't give up on our country. Let's keep loving the Lord. Here's what makes America great. You want to hear the greatest thing about America? Getting up on a Sunday morning, getting your tail out of bed, and going to a church that preaches the gospel. One of the best things you'll do for your country. Amen? And here we go, right here. Let's sing it, son. Lead it off. Let's knock it out. Come on. There was a time that I saw I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching. Every place a time for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to a place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. in a verse where they see me at my worst to the love I had at first I want to go to church tried to walk on my own but I wound up lost now I'm 
making my way to the foot of the cross. Not a trophy for the winners, it's a shelter for the sinners. It's around where I belong. Take me back to a place that feels like home. They see me at my worst To the love I had at first I want to go to church Oh, oh. I want to go to church And oh More than an obligation It's a foundation The family great song. <laughs> Way to belt it out, Mitch. Amen, buddy, and all of y'all. I appreciate you up there. Amen. Man, that's a good song, ain't it? I want to go to church. Come on, what a simple song. <laughs> I want to go to church. Amen. Who would have thought that could have made a song? Pretty good stuff, man. I love it. I love that. I could sing that for about 20 minutes. I know you can. I know, but you'd be dead, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, if I, I wouldn't be it. singing, I'd just go sing it, point, I'd do some more. Here we go. What's next, buddy? Your great name. Your great name. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord. Amen. That's who it's about today. Amen. If you don't know it, you'll learn it pretty quick. Praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Stars say on their way at the sound of your great name. More condemns, feel no shame at the sound of your great sound of your great name, oh Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us, the Son of God and man, oh you are high and lifted up, and all the world
other lips They find their rest At the sound Of your great name All the sick are healed In the dead of grace At the sound Let the sound Of your great name Praise the Lord. Amen, guys. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Two great songs to lead us out in this morning. Amen. Again, thank you for being here today. I appreciate you coming and uh, to have church together. You get to be you. And uh, that's why I just, I just work on being me. You know what I mean? And uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to be you, does it? But to be somebody else, be somebody ain't, that's a job. And then when you get there, you ain't there somebody else showed up we need to be us amen so if you're here today you get to come just as you are today if you're struggling today that's okay that's who you are right now amen now here's one thing we're not going to put up with though if you're lost here today if you died today and you don't know you go to heaven i don't want you to leave that same way you hear me i want you to be changed what i mean i want you to have your faith solid in jesus christ before you leave today you can do that because it's a free gift God gave his son for you on the cross he did it all but you must believe and we've got a message it's gonna be a strong message a good message how that God loves you today all of us and uh, but we've got to believe it man we've got to believe it you hear me or not say so I want you to believe in him today I had a man yesterday at the funeral come up and talk to me he pointed to his wife and he said, he said, she's a spiritual person. I'm not. He said, but you got to me today. He said, and what you said. He said, you seem to be real and you speak a language I understand. And I went, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's what I want to do. And, uh, but I told him, I said, sir, you don't have to turn that key in that car before you leave here today and make sure you know you're going to heaven. And I believe that was what he wanted to do. Amen. But that's on him and that's on you today. Amen. I'll help you. But guys, you got to do that today. You hear me or not say. Now, I don't want to change your personality and who you are and all that. I want to teach you a bunch of bull that's made up. No. But I do want you to know this. You must put your faith in Jesus Christ. All other ways are dead ends. He's the only way. And you think I'm preaching? This ain't preaching. This is just talking. Amen. And it's the truth. So, 
Thank you for being here today and watching online as well. Thank you so much. And that goes for you double. Got it? Say online. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for loving us. And Lord, because of your love, we fall down flat at your feet because we know us. We know our sin. We, we know our nastiness. And Lord, I know more sin about me than anybody. I'm the biggest sinner I know. And Lord, to think that you would love me, Lord, it humbles me. But Lord, I receive that love today. I pray that for everybody in this room or watching online. And Lord, I pray that we'll never forget it was you that loved us first. And help us to love others, we pray. We give you credit for every good thing in our life. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You were up for a long time on your feet. You did good. You've got blood flowing you didn't even know you had. Amen. Come on. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here at Fellowship Church. Uh, we know you could have been here. You could have been anywhere this morning, and it's a beautiful morning out there. We're just so glad you're starting your week off right, right here at Fellowship Church. Thank you so very, very much. And good morning to everyone online. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And if everyone online or here in the room, if you, today's your first time here, do us a favor. Fill out that guest registry right there in your worship guide. Or if you uh, send us a Facebook message or an email. And uh, we'd love to stay in touch with you. We'd send you a little note of encouragement this week, thanking you for being here, being a part of today's service. We're not going to call you. We're not going to bother you. Uh, we just want to do that as well as send you a postcard whenever a big event is coming up. Amen. So if you don't mind doing that, please do so this morning. Amen. Tonight at 5 o'clock, our middle school and our high school ministry is meeting right here at Fellowship Church. Come on out. If you, if you know anybody who has uh, middle school or high school age kids, they're going to be blessed. They're going to be loved. They're going to be fed. Uh, physically as well as spiritually. They're going to be taught how much they matter, how much they're loved. It's not a message they're hearing out in the world. So if you know anybody in that age group, invite them. Tell them to be here tonight at 5 o'clock. And men's Bible study starting tomorrow. Ronnie Jackson's group. Do you still have five spots, brother? So we have a total of seven spots left in this awesome Bible study starting tomorrow. He's got two on hand, um, and if you don't get the first two, you'll get them tomorrow, hopefully, uh, at the start of the Bible study. It's a great, great study. Uh, Dr. Charles Stanley speaking about how, how God sees you, not how the world sees you, not how you see you or your friends or anybody else. It's about how God sees you. So guys, check out this great Bible study. Plug into it. Uh, see Ronnie at the end of the class before they're all gone. And we got lots of other Bible studies going on. If tomorrow night's schedule, schedule doesn't work for you, uh, check out right on your worship guide all the different studies you can be a part of. If you have any questions about any of them, give us a call at the office and we'll fill you in. And this Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to be having a celebration of life right here at the church. Uh, many of you knew Gene, uh, awesome, awesome man kind man, his, be his beautiful, lovely wife, Miss Ann, uh, will be here, and her family, everyone's flying in, uh, so if, if, if you want to be a part of this on Wednesday at 1 o'clock, come out here and support the family, we'd really, really appreciate it this Wednesday at 1. Senior Fellowship is on Thursday of this week at 11 o'clock. Uh, please sign up today on your way out. We're going to be providing the main dish as well as the dessert. Uh, we would love if you'd bring a nice side dish, your favorite side dish. We're going to be doing pulled pork. So really anything that goes well with that, even if it doesn't go well with it, we'll probably eat it anyway. So come on out. Just please sign up on your way out today so we have enough food for everybody. Uh, thank you so much. And this is a Thursday night. They are, they've begun studying the book of Philippians. So if, if you've not plugged in, again, to a Bible study, check out this great one. They're just starting it off. They go verse by verse, um, and you will be blessed. Uh, John Cosgrove leads this group, and it's just a great, great group of people to plug in with. And our Women's Spring Luncheon is coming up Saturday at noon. Ladies, if you've not, well, no, I'm sorry. Actually, all the tickets are gone. I apologize. Yeah, it's all filled up. So this is more of a reminder. It's a reminder. He sh uh, Dina said, please bring your ticket. Uh, that way you can get in. And also, they, they usually do like raffles and all kind of good stuff. So please bring your ticket, ladies. Don't forget to come out next Saturday at noon right here at the church. 
And our Freedom Celebration is the last Sunday of the month. Please sign up on your way out today. We're going to be doing fried chicken. We're going to be providing all the sides, desserts, everything. We're going to be doing everything from soup to nuts this time. So do us a favor. Sign up so we have an accurate head count for food. And uh, it'll be right after the 1030 service. So either you can double dip that day or you can come to the 830 service and then come back around noon. And uh, we just would absolutely love for you to be a part of that service. And also, this is kind of a, a different little ministry we've got going on here. We are asking you to bring your used stamps and all of the mail, your junk mail, whatever mail you got coming in. Bring your stamps in. And over there at the sign-up table, uh, Miss Faith Crane's over there. And she collects those stamps, and they take those stamps, and they turn that into money. And that money goes into missions and benevolence for people. Uh, there's a great organization down in Fort Myers that does that. If you have more questions about it, if you're curious about all the details, she's got some paperwork and little pamphlets over there. But just we're just asking you to save some trash and bring it in. In, please and this is our town we thank you so very much for your support at fellowship church uh, you, you wear the shirts you wear the hats you put the bumper stickers in your car you can't go into a busy parking lot without seeing a half a dozen of us there thank you so much but if you haven't done that please do so grab a bumper sticker they're all for free out there shirts hats all that stuff is for five dollars and it just makes such a difference wearing something out in the community and it just sparks interest it's just it's a saturation and people when they want to go to church when they're looking for something they'll come here and pastor gary can tell them about jesus christ and as always, we love to thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We're a debt-free ministry because of you. Uh, we were able to do all these so many different events here for the community, not charging anyone a dime ever. And we're able to do that because of you. So thank you for that. If you, this week we had a, a local um, music teacher. And she had, oh, I don't even know how many dozens of students, and everyone was shooting her down saying, no, because of COVID, we were, they're still not letting people gather together like this. So she, and she wanted to plan ahead, so maybe she, at the last second she could have got in, but she wanted to plan ahead, so we offered this to her. She came in here. We probably had a total of about 300 parents that have never set foot in this building before here this week. And it was just an incredible, incredible reach out. Didn't charge her a dime. She was in tears by the time it was over with. And I said to her, I said, and I said, this is now your building. I said, anytime you want to do this, let us know. And we'll work with you. And she just was so grateful. Such a sweet lady, such a sweet family. And all of these children that haven't had a chance to perform. They've been practicing for the last, you know, however many years. And none of them have been allowed to perform in front of a crowd. And this was their first chance. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, those kids, it meant the world to them. So, again, we thank you for that. And, uh, again, it's because of your giving that we're able to not even ask for money because we got to run the air, the lights, all that stuff. It all costs money. So, yes, yeah, so, so thank you so very much for that. Amen. And don't forget, we have hospitality right after service. Go make a new fellowship friend today. And uh, everything's for free over there as well. We love and appreciate you and hope you have an incredible rest of your day. God bless you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Amen. Appreciate you. That's crazy right there. I mean, call down to the Punta Gorda Civic Center, see if they'll rent that, see if they'll just say you can come for nothing. And this is better than that. I've been there many times, flat floor, go to a concert, it's hard to see. And, uh, but look what the Lord did, amen? Gave us a beautiful place and uh, we, just, we just give him credit, amen? I think he likes it when you give him credit for stuff, amen? But uh, we appreciate it. It takes a lot of work to make that happen. I also want to thank the Lord. We've had some big expenses, man, big air conditioner things. These are not little air conditioners. They're big ones. And uh, major expense on something there that went down. And then the whole building outside, other than that little second part of behind me back there, all just got repainted. And then you see all the, the landscaping, the yard work. I mean, that's just, that's buku bucks, man to keep the place looking nice. And I just want to give the Lord the credit. Can we thank the Lord? All those bills are paid. <laughs> paid, baby. Amen. And we pay them Johnny on the spot. Y'all hear me or not? We don't wait. And we want to be that church. This is our town. It's our reputation. Not that we're better than people, but we want to be good people. We want to do the right thing. Amen. So that when you wear a shirt, you know, and it's not going to turn everybody on. I get that. But when you're wearing a shirt, you can say, hey, look, this is my church, and I know who we are, and we love Jesus, and we love people, and this is our town, and we try to do the right thing. Amen? And that, that'll reach out to people because so many don't. Amen? And they're crooks, and they're horrible. And uh, we don't want to have, I won't have anything to do with any ministry. I don't want anything to do with nothing like that. Amen? 
And we don't have to. We just got to just stay steady. Amen? Say that with me. Stay what? Stay steady. Praise the Lord. Speaking of steady, how you doing, son? Good. Good. Appreciate you today. Thanks. I know uh, you depend a lot on uh, Joel and Sherry and and Chris and, uh, you know, Jacqueline and Elise. I mean, that's five right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we appreciate you. Appreciate you being the leader you are. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you standing up tall, singing today. Appreciate you. It's an honor. Amen. And even right now, he's going to go to the well and do an old song. Yeah, this is old school. This is old school with him and Miss Karen. Miss Karen's been, Miss Karen, when do you think, how long have you been playing this song, your life? How long have you been thinking you've been doing this song? Did you do it back up north? So about 20 years probably now, right? Down here with us. It's one of my favorite songs. There's a great story behind this song. And uh, the lady that wrote the song mm -hmm. yeah. actually cared for a pastor and his wife and they were invalids they came to a place where both of them were invalids actually she just went to visit them even though they were invalids they both somehow cared for one another it ain't like one's healthy one ain't they both were so poor health and it was way back in the day and <laughs> she was blown away at their good attitude how they loved on one another, how they were thankful, how they could even make it. How y'all make it here? Taking care of one another. And I think it was the old lady that said to the woman, well, if his eye's on the sparrow, then I know he's watching me and my husband and taking care of us. And it blew the woman away. And she wrote this song. And it's been one of the greatest songs in gospel music, in my opinion, ever written. Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen Mitchell Clark bringing you a bit of history today. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? Oh, and long for heaven and home. Jesus sends my portion, my constant friend is he, his And I know he watches me. And I sing because I am happy. And I sing because I am free. Yeah. His eyes, his own. And I know he watches me. So let not your heart be troubled for his tender word. I Oh, my 
doubts and fears Though by the path he leadeth But one small step it may seek Cause he's a his own And I know he watches me And I sing because I am happy And I sing because I am free yeah, is I, is I, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let me hug your neck. Wow, unbelievable. What a song, man. What a song. What a song, man. You belted the tar out of it. Man, wow. Stay up on your feet, amen, or jump up on your feet. Wow, what a great song, amen. I forgot that's what that woman saw. She saw they were happy. She saw those people were happy. Invalids, can't make it hardly. Can't even move around. And they were happy. And they were singing. They would sing to one another. And they sang because they were happy. Amen, say. What a good, what a good song, man. Appreciate it. Are we doing an old school song? Oh, well, I mean, kind of, yeah. Do you want me to help you or do you rather yeah, not? Please, come on. Oh, I'll help you. You've been, you've been carrying a lot of weight today. Help. I'll help you. How about that? Let's go. But now listen, when it gets real high, I got to bail on you. That's fine. I got to quit. Amen. Come on, let's do it. I can do, do the chains are gone part if you want to do it. Yeah, you do the chains are gone. I'll do the amazing grace. Y'all ready? Here we go. By the way, our offering's coming up in just a bit. I always like to just say a little bit about that. I, uh, especially if we have first timers. We're a little bit different around here. You've already discovered that already. Debt free. You get to be you. <laughs> Uh, we just want to do right, man. And it, when it comes to giving, we ask that you give. But if you give, we ask you to give cheerfully. If for some reason you can't give here cheerfully, we ask you to hang on to it. Because we want this to be just a blessing. We want it to be a blessing to the Lord. We want it to be a blessing to the this church. We want it to be a blessing to the staff as they work here. And we don't want to guilt you into giving around here. I, I like working in a happy place. Y'all hear me or not say? And that's what we have here. So if you can give that way today, that'll come up in just a moment. It'll help take care of the needs of our ministry. And then towards the end of the month, the last uh, Sunday of the month, all that offering is going to go to the kids' wing that uh, we're proposing to build for the glory of God. Amen? And that's going to come up. We're going to do that debt-free. So, But today's offering goes to meet the needs of our ministry. Amen? That's coming up right after this. Let's sing it. Here we go. Is I'll it me? Started. Yeah, I'll get you started. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. Come on. Like me, I once was lost. But now I'm found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught My heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Mitchell, take it, come on. My chains are gone, now I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. The Lord has 
this good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and my portion be as long as life endures my chains are My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. One more time. You'll chains. slow it down. My chains are gone. I've been set my God, my Savior, has ransomed me. Dissolve like snow, the sun forbade to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever. Good old school music today. A couple of them, amen? I like all of them, man. They all fit like a glove today. I love the music today, amen? Now I'm shot from here on. Whoo, singing a word, yeah. I don't know if there's an exercise video where people, they don't do anything but just sing. I believe you could make money on that. You mean I can eat what I want? Mm-hmm. Just sing like three times a day for an hour. Hard songs. I bet you would lose weight. Probably be dead by Friday. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. God bless you today. Y'all happy today? You seem like happy folk to me. Come on. Come on. You having a good day at church? I appreciate you. I appreciate your encouragement. I appreciate this young couple right back there. Okay. Here's Dr. and Mrs. McCombs in here. Then you, that young couple. You see yourself right there. Wave at me. You got it. They made a special trip up here maybe several months ago just to tell me how much they loved me. And I didn't know them and tell me the change that we've made in their life. Is that true? Baptized their oldest daughter. They love me with all their heart. It's a, it, that's the kind of church that Gary Clark pastors. If you're here today for the first time, church can be crazy, it can be political, it can be so mean-spirited. That's not what we have here. You got it or not? We, you know, we love Jesus, we love people, we love each other, baby. That's what we do. Come on. Amen. I just appreciate you. I just appreciate you. My heart's full. I guess maybe I want to go to church, then I'm hearing songs, his eyes on the sparrow, then I'm hearing amazing grace, how sweet the sound, and it just makes me almost want to cry. You know what I mean? Because I'm from Brockingham. And we didn't go to church. We cussed the Lord. We didn't love the Lord. So if I can love the Lord and he can love me first, then he certainly loves you first. Amen? And you can love him today. Amen? So thank you for giving to the Lord. We appreciate it. Ronnie, come on, pray for us. Appreciate you, buddy. Got a big Bible story, study. Love you back, man. Thank you for loving on me. I appreciate it. How many you got tomorrow night, you think? We have 46 signed up. 46. Now, that's just one Bible study tomorrow night. 46 men. That's almost unheard of, guys. That's almost unheard of. 
And uh, we're going to treat you there just like you get treated here. Okay? And we're not ashamed to be men. And uh, this is something I don't go to. I don't run it. He leads this. Amen? And the Lord uses him. Amen? But then we got John. And we got others that are doing that. But I'm just saying, this church is not Gary doing everything. Used to do more than I do. But it's great to see the body grow and get lifted up and more people serving. And, and uh, I take off go to the mountains every once in a while now. And I like it. Maybe you'll get longer life out of me if I keep doing that. Amen? That's the plan. That's the plan right now. All right? So thank you. Thank you for... You get Bible said They got all kinds of stuff, I'm sure. Thank you for giving. If you can give cheerfully, help us today. Help us today if you can do it cheerfully. And uh, you're part of a debt-free church that... Uh, we just, we just love the Lord. We love, uh, we, we love paying our bills. Amen? Isn't that funny? Because when we do it, we go, thank you, Lord. I remind Alex all the time, Alex, this isn't normal. I walk into his office, I go, Alex, this isn't normal. See, I've had church before. Only church Alex has really ever known is this one. I told him, this ain't normal. I hug him and I keep, we hear hug each other on the face. I go, that ain't normal. <laughs> we like not, we like, but you know, we like being us. It's amazing when you're just you, how good things might could be. Try that in your marriage. Amen or not? Okay, good stuff. Come on. Praise the Lord, buddy. Uh, Father God, humbly we come to you, Lord, and we thank you because you tell us in your word that you first loved us. And because you first loved us, we know how to love each other. And we just praise you for that, Lord God. And we give you credit for uh, our uh, motto. We are a church that loves God and loves Jesus. We love people. And Lord, help us radiate that uh, this day as we go out to have refreshment, Lord God. Um, help us to find somebody to hug a neck or shake a hand. Father, we want to thank you for this offering, Lord. We pray that you would uh, bless it, that you would multiply it, Lord God, that uh, you would use it into your kingdom and uh, our town here in Inglewood uh, and Port Charlotte and West Rotunda, Lord. Uh, we also pray uh, that you would bless the giver, Lord, uh, that they would learn your economy, Lord. Uh, give, and it'll be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, running over, poured out into your lap. And the measure in which you give, it's given back to you. Help us to give that love that you give us away. And it's in Jesus' precious name we ask these things. Amen. Amen, brother. Appreciate you, man. Love you, brother. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you. If you're watching online, thank you. Would you go ahead and send us a little note right now on Facebook? We know there's other avenues you're watching as well, but on Facebook for sure, I'll read that about 1 o'clock today. If you don't mind, I'd appreciate it. Any comment, any encouragement, any encouragement. And thank you for your giving. We appreciate it.
A great song, Miss Karen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for everybody serving us today. Amen. Appreciate y'all. The song was I Bowed on My Knees that she just played and cried holy. That's an old-time song as well. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Sometimes I want to sing that with you until I realize it goes into the stratosphere. I mean, that is one high song. You could drop it, but it ain't as good when you drop it. It ain't the same. You know what I mean? You like to belt it out. Let's go to the message this morning. Y'all ready? Let's go. We're in a series called Under His Wings. And last week was Mother's Day. I did something I normally don't do. I just parked it on my intro and just stayed right there. I did. Because that verse just got to me. It's a verse that I'm going to repeat with you today. But now we'll move the message forward. And we're going to finish the message today. It'll be a strong message. We didn't start it really. So here we go. Let's go. It's called Under His Wings, a brand new series. We're going to look at that. And there goes that little piece of paper flying away. Yeah, yeah, look right there. But look at that picture he chose. And he does all that. He finds everything to go along with when I give uh, talks. And look at all those, those legs underneath there. That's not a chicken with a bunch of legs. That's a mama. That's a mama taking care of her babies. Because that's what mamas do. Good mamas don't have to be told to do this. This is something mamas do, and that's a gift from God. And as we celebrated Mother's Day and last week, and every day should be a day to celebrate your mother. You know, when you got a mother. Love her. Appreciate her. But let's go with it. The title of the message is Believe God Blesses. Now help me. If it's your first time you've been coming to a three, now help me. You're going to learn. It'll be good for you. Say it with me. Believe God Blesses. Now you like be good. Believe. One more time. Believe God Blesses. Big emphasis on believe. It's funny how we say, uh, I can't believe God let this happen. That's because you believe God curses you. Or you're not grateful enough. You haven't got to the place in your life where you just reject that kind of thinking. God's not picking on me at all. It was that person that did that, or I did that to myself, or it's this policy from a government or whatever. But God is good to me. And that's a belief. We want to talk about that in, in this message today. Believe God blesses. We'll review just a bit. Say that with me. God is what? That's what you need to believe. God is good. To me, God was a cuss word growing up. I never would have ever said, thank God, praise God. It was not in my vocabulary. It was not in my family's vocabulary. It was not something we did. But it's funny when we wanted to make an emphasis on something we didn't like or somebody we didn't like or something bad happened, we'd curse his name. Isn't that crazy, yes or no? was totally the opposite as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ. Y'all hear me or not? God is good to me. I don't blame him. If I find myself doing that, I catch myself and go, you're an idiot, Gary Clark. God's been good to you. It's funny. I don't find myself doing that much ever now. And I've been through some hard times, man. But it's, I think it's those hard times that made me appreciate it more and more and more and more and more and more. God is so good to me. Amen? Let's talk about it today. This was a scripture I discovered. Of course, I've read it many times, but never to make it into a series. But we did with this brand new series. Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. They hated his guts. They wanted him dead and eventually had him killed. But he came to give his life a ransom. No man took his life from him. They thought they did. They celebrated it. But he said, you do that, three days later I'll rise again. And that's exactly what he did. And turned everything upside down. And it's never been the same. Let's thank the Lord. Never been the same. <laughs> Amen. Come on. And that's what we believe as believers in Christ. But here they were, threatening him, berating him. The hierarchy, you couldn't get higher muckety-mucks right there in Jerusalem. He said, oh, Jesus, speaking, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which kills the prophets. I've been there about 12 times. When you go to Jerusalem, it's called the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives looks across at the city of Jerusalem. But between the Mount of Olives 
and the city of Jerusalem is nothing but graves. Graves. Because, see, the Bible says that Jesus will return. He will put his foot on the Mount of Olives. And that's where Jesus ascended from, was the Mount of Olives. So there's this idea when a lot of people, they want to get buried, they got buried over there so they could be first. Isn't that how stupid we are? <laughs> We're the dumbest people. But anyway, but that's been happening for a long time. And even before Jesus came, that's where they would bury the prophets. And a lot of them were killed right there in Jerusalem, and they were buried right there. And so when he's speaking, when he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that stone and kill the prophets, as he's speaking to them, just imagine behind his back is all those graves. You talk about a backdrop for a speech. But he says this, How often would I have gathered you together with me as a hen does her brood or her children under her what? That's the title of the series. And here's our message today. We're going to fight against these last words. Say it with me. And you would not. We're going to fight right there today. That's where my fight is on those last few words today. God loves you. God is for you. Any good mama picture you've ever had is just a reflection of God. Like I said last week when I talked to, I asked Roger in my office, is your mother the closest thing to God you've ever seen? And without even saying anything, Roger's eyes just welled up with tears. And he said, absolutely, without a doubt. Where did Miss Pat get that from? Take a wild guess. God. And I love this picture right here. He didn't say as a rooster, did he? <laughs> he, said, as a, he said as a what? And isn't it something how that we even criticize women? I've heard women criticize, she's just an old mother hen. We're to thank God for mother hens. Y'all hear me or not? Yeah, thank the Lord. We ought to thank God for mamas that love their kids. <laughs> that go to bat for their kids. My mother was a drunk. But the kids would be in the neighborhood playing in the backyard. Mama get home after work, and that old LTD like Cruella DeVille would come up the road like doing the number. And she'd pull in that driveway, and she had a couple of six-packs, so she'd already gone to Jean's Tavern. She just wore out, and she said this when she pulled into the driveway many times. All the kids in the yard, if you don't belong to me, go home. And boy, they'd scatter. <laughs> Mess with Mama, I'm telling you right now. And even as a drunk woman, mama that was teaching us without her even knowing it, without her even knowing it, she was teaching Gary and Terry and Kenny and Ray and Janice and Ann, she was teaching us, you belong to me. Those other chickens don't, but you belong to me. And she'd wear us out. She'd be put in jail easy today. But I tell people, she wore us out and that kept me out of jail. That's what she did. Amen? So, mamas. Mamas are awesome. And, and Jesus compared himself to a mama. That's a real man that can do that. Y'all hear me or not say? Okay? How a mother cares for her children is a picture of how God cares for me. Now, Roger, you know we're flying from here on in. Now, when things got tough in my life, now, Mama became a Christian in 1977. I want us to just encourage a fellow here today, and he's, he's already an encouragement to us. But Ben Mueller came from Colorado. He's a Minnesota Vikings fan, so he's, he is a really high, high in my estimation of people. You're way up there, buddy. You're, you're one of the dumbest people, though, I've ever met, though. You know what I'm saying? Because you and me, you and me, because we love the Vikings. We're crazy people. But anyway, but I love you, buddy. Anyway, how's it feel to get insulted? You love that. Good, good, good. He told me today, let's thank the Lord. He said, 22 years today, sober. 
right there. And he said it's all because of Jesus Christ helping him. Amen? Amen. I love that. I love that. So anyway, so my mama got saved. She was a, a drunk, and she got saved December the 18th, 1977, and so did I that day as a hell-raising teenager. But my mother went home that day and cast through everything she had down the sink, the cast iron sink in the kitchen. She didn't drink another drop. And mama became, not overnight, she already had great qualities as a mother. There's a lot of great things she did. And, uh, but she became my biggest fan, biggest supporter, biggest encourager, somebody I could call no matter what. If, if the worst thing happened in the world and I could only call one person, and it happened a few times, I called Mama. Just picture God like that. Would you all think of him like that? Say, the one person, when it's just awful, you could call him. Think of him like that. Y'all hear me or not? But she was. And then when I would talk to her on the phone many times, because I was grown then, married, young'uns, she would tell me, say it with me, Romans 8, 28 is still in the Bible. Come on, man, y'all pitiful. Let's do it again. Romans 8, 28 is still in the Bible. Hey, yeah, thank the Lord. Come on, that's a good thing. You might not know what you're clapping for, but it's good. <laughs> you're going to learn before we get done today. What was Mama saying? Well, that's our message today, and you'll see. What's the title again? Under His Wings is a series. You understand where that came from? The, the hen, right? I would have gathered you under my wings, but you would not. Mama made the decision one day, I made the decision one day to say, yes, we want that. Amen? We didn't know what we were saying. Amen? But when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that's what you're getting. Amen? You're getting a God who loves you, and you're acknowledging that he loves you, and he becomes your father, your savior, your brother, your friend, your comforter. Is that what the Bible teaches? Absolutely. Amen? So she would share this verse with me. This was a woman who didn't know anything about the Bible, who didn't graduate high school, and she became legend. In my life. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? If she can do it, you can do it. Amen? That's what I love about her story. She would tell me this, Gary. And we know all things work together for good. To them who love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Say that scripture with me. And we know all things work together for what? To them that love, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want to take the next few minutes, and we're going to push forward. We're going to, I, could get, I could stop right there if I'm not careful. Nothing's more important to a Christian's peace of mind than absolutely knowing what mama taught me. The message today, under his wings. Why are you talking about your mom in this message? She's the closest thing on earth to a hen. Got it or not? Say in my life, there were six of us. And so when Jesus said, as a hen, I would that I want to take you under my wings, it's only natural for me to think of mama right through here. Y'all hear me? Does that make any sense to you? Am I, am I too elementary for you? This verse is incredible, and you're going to see how it ties in. This verse, nothing's more important to you than to believe God blesses. Nothing's more important in your Christian life than you to always know, God is good to me. You're going to have crap after crap after crap. And you're going to get derailed. And you're going to become a mess. But if you always know, <laughs> he loved me first. He loved me. Me. He's good to me. He's blessed me. Scriptures like this, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 
That's huge, man, in your Christian life. Are y'all hearing me? Am I, have I lost my mind up here? This is called under his wing. This is how you stay under his wings, by believing he blesses me under here. Y'all hear me or not? Now, I'm going to go over here act like a fool. This is where the blessing is. Right here. Under his wings. you got to believe that if you're going to stay there. Amen? And you got to know that if you get crazy and start running out there. This is where it is, baby, right here. Amen? That's why I love the song, I Want to Go to Church. <laughs> I love that song. Because it reminds me of just running back, running back. We know this, the church ain't God, but we represent him here. We proclaim him here. We love him here. Amen? So we're in the line of fire, baby. So run. So this verse teaches that all things of every description that touches your life or my life, they're overruled by what? By who? For who's good? My good. That's a great God. Does that sound like a mother caring for her kid? Yes or no? Does mamas overrule stuff sometimes? Do we think it's not for our good sometimes? But ultimately, is it for our good? That's what that verse teaches. That's why he could say the hen thing. Y'all hear me or not? We can connect right here if you try not to get too fancy. All things in the Christian's life may not be good. But God is able to harmonize those things together for our ultimate good. That's huge. People shoot themselves. Get involved in drugs. They find other ways to handle the problems in life. And God's saying, come here, come here, come here, come here. Get back over here. We can work this out. I'm God, you're not. Your head can't handle it. But over here, <laughs> you can rest underneath these wings. You can find you some help in a time of trouble. I love this. Keep pushing. Let's break this verse down. We know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We're breaking down now. And we know. What's that mean? It means we know intuitively, deep down. This is something every believer needs to know deep down in your gut. I don't understand all the Bible. Good, I didn't ask you to. I'm asking you right now to listen. And you get this verse down right now, and it'll carry you a long way in your life. Here it is. And we know. What's that mean? We spiritually perceive this. This is from God Almighty to your heart. I have no doubt. I am positive that when I'm under the control of the Holy Spirit and I reflect mentally, listen, I have no doubt. No matter what it is I'm going through, God can work it out. Did it, did it say he's going to get me out? didn't say that. He's just going to work some of this mess out that you can't work out when you try to work it out. Yeah, do what you can, but then you start to get nuts. You need to have some place you can go. It's called him. Amen? And he can help you. That's what this verse teaches. That's what Mama was trying to tell me. Gary, you got to believe this, you're saying. Deep down in your gut. See, this matters what we do at Fellowship Church. I don't know if y'all know that or not. This matters what we do here. It matters to me. This has been my life. If you ask me, Gary, what's one of the secrets of your life? I'd point that verse right there and I'd put it on the screen for you. <laughs> Amen. What a verse. Deep down inside my gut, man, I know it. And you got to know, you got to believe this. You got to believe God blesses. You got to believe God's good to you. Or you're going to keep running out here just like the Pharisees did. He's saying, I want you over here. I want to gather you, but you would not. I know that God is good. I know God's all about good. Y'all hear me or not? Say that last one with me. God ain't bad at... How many hand raised real quick would say, I went down that trail in my life. I believed God was picking on me. He was bad to me, and it sure hurt me. Let me see some hands. It didn't help me, did it? Didn't help you, did it? Okay? One of the dumbest things you'll ever do is be mad at your mother. I'm talking about, yeah, mothers can be a problem. They can, some of them are not good mothers. I get that. Most are. Worst things you ever do in your life. 
is have that kind of separation between a mother. But can you imagine, multiply that times a million and having that kind of separation from God Almighty. Y'all hear me or not? You got to believe he's good. He's all about good. And we know. So I know what? God blesses. I know he's good to me. All things. That all things. What's that, what does that mean? Just It says what it says. It means this. All things, period. I know that God can work all things together. Amen? It means all things. Pop it, Raj. I know that all things... What's that mean? It means what it says. You don't understand. How many ever said that before to somebody? You don't understand what I'm going through. Well, they probably don't know what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. He's dealt with not only your crap and the crap you're going through, but the crap of a whole lot of people. And he's a good daddy. Amen? And he can take care of it. He can handle it. If I kill him, it'll get better. Won't you let him do stuff you hear me he can work it together for good that word is a Greek word it means synergy that's where that word comes from synergy it's a word you see more of these days the last old oh, 20 30 years it means that God is actively working all things together for my good on whose behalf on my behalf I screw it up he can make it better how many of you went through something, you thought it was the end of the world, now that you look back on it, it won't be the end of the world, and your world's better than it ever was. Let me see some hands. Isn't that funny? How many, if it would have been your way, you would have done it a different way, and it would have probably been a mess today? Can I see some hands? That's called synergy. He wants to. He wants to gather you under his wings. But you would not. That's to the believer too, man. We need to believe God blesses. That's what mama was trying to pound in my head. He works things together for good. He does this for who? For who? To them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So, and we know God works all things together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So who is this promise for? It's for who? Believers. Say it with me. It's for who? That's what he was trying to tell them. Oh, how I wanted to bring you under my wing. But you would not. You're religious. And maybe some of you today, you're hanging on to, I'm a good person. I go to church. I don't need to put my faith totally in Jesus Christ and him alone. I believe other ways get you to heaven. You are a fool, and I said it. It's crazy. This is God's word. He had one son, but here you are out here trying to get up some other way. You know what he calls that in the Bible? A thief and a what? A robber. It's not happening. Guys, this promise is for who? It's for who? Believers. So my goal for you today is you not to leave lost. Do not turn that key in that car today without knowing my faith is in Jesus Christ. I believe in what he did on the cross, not what you did on the cross. You weren't even there, okay? I believe what he did on the cross. He rose from the dead. I believe in him. And by being a believer in Christ, this is what you get. What I get from being a Christian. Oh, you get a lot. <laughs> you don't get hell. How about that one? We'll check that one off. And you get under his wings. Amen? Come on, you know who created you. Instead of believing stupid stuff like, we're an accident, big bang, blew up, here I am. It's not flying anymore. As technology gets stronger and stronger and stronger, you're seeing with Roe v. Wade and things like that now, they used to say it's a blob of tissue. I'm sorry, technology and pictures caught up with what the baby looks like. My daughter's 16 weeks pregnant right now. She sends me stuff about every day, but at least every week, some update on where she's at in her pregnancy. Okay? Baby's ears are right now. They're about down here. Now they're right here where they're supposed to be, and they can actually hear it 16 weeks. Eyes, flopping their eyes a little bit. Can smell. It's not a blob of tissue. You understand? 
But beautiful, this is getting to know. When you put your faith in God, get under his wings. It changes everything. Keep looking. This promise isn't for the perfect. Nobody is perfect. We've all sinned. It's for the truly set with me and sincerely what? I know mama was saved. And when I would call her on the phone, not only she was my mama, she was a saved mama. And I saw the change in her life. And I knew she was sincere. And boy, 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 did that carry a lot of weight with me. She was better than any seminary teacher I ever had. She taught me simple scriptures, even at 17, 18 years old, because I, I became a Christian later. But she taught me because she was sincerely saved. Amen? This is what you have in Christ. Are y'all hearing me or not? To them who love God, to them who are the called according to his what? Purpose. That means God's plan. God has a plan for my life. You mean God can have a plan for the crap? Mm-hmm. Even chicken manure, they use it for fertilizer. So when you're going through crap, God can use it to grow you. And you can use it to get to know him and get to know him better. There's all kinds of things that can happen. He can weed certain things out of your life. Yes or no? Because we're hard-headed, man. So the bad, God can take the bad. Is this not, it's the number one question people have. Why do bad things happen to good people? That's the number one question people. If there's a God, why does he let bad things happen to good people? That's the number one question people have. It's because you live on planet earth. It's fallen. Sinners are everywhere and you're one of them. And you're missing the one who can give you everlasting life and can help you take some of the bad crap in your life and turn it out for good. That's a beautiful message to me. This sounds like a winning formula to me to build a church. It's good stuff. To them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, the goal is glory. God wants us to be conformed to the image of his what? That's it. That's it right there. He wanted to gather them, Jesus said. He knew they were preaching heresy there in Jerusalem. He knew they were all about the money now. They were all about their, their hierarchy and rules. and all. They were just they were horrible people. They were hypocrites. He wanted this for their life, but they wouldn't take it. He wants it for your life. Will you receive it today? Will you believe, will you believe that God is good? Will you believe that God blesses my life? Y'all hear me or not? And some of you don't know me. And you think I've probably had the smoothest, easiest life. Many of you do know me. And many of you have told me you wouldn't want to have to go through the things I've gone through. What does that mean? It just means we go through stuff in life. But here's what I want it to mean today. Here's a man standing before you who's been through some hard times who believes this book. And believes this scripture. And it changed my life. Yeah, praise the Lord. Flat out. This is good stuff. We're going to rush through to the end. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated us. Verse 29, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's God's will for your life. He takes these things in your life, things you do, things I do, things that other people have done to us, bad things, situations, crises, and he is conforming you and me to the image of his son Jesus because we're to shine our light on this planet, and you shining you is not the best light. He wants you to be you, but he wants him shining through you. And when you have a story of pain, suffering, struggle, this, that, or the other, instead of blaming, cussing, whining, and crying, he can see a lot of people come to him. This is a powerful message. Let's build the case that God's actively working all things together for good in my life. Okay? That's what the next few verses do. I preach the verse. That's the verse. You know the verse now. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It's for believers. I must believe God blesses. I must believe God is good to me, period. Got it? Between start and finish in the Christian life, there are three steps that you'll go through. These are the next couple of verses. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he called. So he's called you, just like he called those Pharisees. I would that you would come under my wings. He's called every one of us to be saved, every one of us, okay? And them whom he's called, he's what? He's justified. And them whom he's justified, he is 
glorified. Let's look at those three words real quick because the clock's ticking. Step one, called, summoned, and given salvation. He wants to do that for you today. If you're not a believer in Christ, today is the day for you to be saved. The call is out. Would you come to him today and say, yes, I believe in you, Jesus. I'm not believing in me and my good works or anything else anymore. I put my faith in totally and trust in you. That call's gone out today. Number two, step two, justified. When you answer that call, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ himself declares you righteous. Oh, because last time I checked, he's not only your lawyer, he's the judge because all authority has been given to him. And so when you put your faith in him, you have been declared righteous. Okay? That's step number two in the process. You're not guilty because of you or because of him. Because of him. You are guilty. He took your hell. He took your punishment. And we put our faith in him and our trust in him. That's the message of the gospel. Number three, glorified. That's that verse prior where he's conforming us now to the image of his son. And just like a, a blacksmith uses fire and heat to move metal and to make it do different things, that's what God does. He takes the heat in our life, the hot times, the hard times. He bends them, he molds us, and he makes us into the men and women we are. Amen? What a great thing he does for us. Amen? It's crazy. So that's his plan for our life. How do I know all things work together for good? How do I know God blesses? How do I know God's good? Well, there's six questions. And Raj, we'll fly through them real quick. Here they are. God wants you to ask yourself, and he puts them in Scripture right after Romans 8, 28. He wants you to know without a doubt today that no, I'm not picking on you. I take everything in your life, and I work it together for good. For your good, for my glory, so you can have a purpose in your life down here on this earth. I do that for you. I want to do that for you. But you would not. God says, ask yourself these questions then. Number one, what shall we say to these things? What are you going to say to what I just said, all things work together for good, that God loves you, that he calls you, justifies you, glorifies you? What are you going to say to these things? Here's what you ought to say. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's what we ought to say. Thank you that you do that for me. That's incredible. That's question number one. Keep going. God's good, man. Question number two. If God be for us, who can be against us? What's your answer on that one? Huh? Satan and his demons are against us, but they can't prevail. You've gone through mass, so what? Not going to win because I believe God blesses. I believe God's good to me. Fight back! This gives me strength to fight. Put on the whole armor of God, etc. Keep going, Roger. I'm out of time. Number three. Number three. No one or no thing can stand against me. A lot of scripture here, but that's okay. God is what? Question number three, ask yourself. Right here in the scriptures. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You're focusing on the mess. You're focusing right. Listen to me. God is good to you. He has blessed you. He's going to take you through this. He's going to give you whatever you need. you got to just trust him. You hear me or not? Do I sound like a lunatic? I hope I do. Since God gave his only son, Jesus, he will certainly not hesitate to give us whatever we need for our ultimate good and our sanctification while we're here on this earth. Might not be the way we wanted it. Might be we sort of screwed it up. He has to help us back around. Stay under the wings, baby. Number four, fourth question. Who should lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's him that justifies. What's that mean? Listen, listen. Who's going to make any formal accusation against you or press court in, you, in, 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 in God's court against you one day? Nobody's going to do that because Jesus took your beating. He took your hell. He took your punishment. There's nothing. Nothing stands in the way of you trusting him for whatever you're going through. Yeah, but this happened, but this happened. Listen to me. You quit charging him when he's freely not charging you anything in your life. No accusations are ever going to stand against you. You can make it through anything with him on your team. I love this. 
Satan's the accuser of the brethren, not, not God. God loves you. Just keep going. Amen, buddy. Keep going. God is good. Number five, who is he that's going to condemn me? Nobody can condemn me because I'm in Christ. Say that with me. Nobody can condemn me because I am I'm in Christ. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I am, I, I, I'm, I'm setting pretty good under these wings. Get behind me, Satan. You don't belong here. I love this. This speaks of future tense. Who's going to condemn me in the end? Nobody's going to condemn me in the end. So why don't you trust him now? Since he's going to be there for you now and forever. Keep going. It's Jesus Christ who died. Keep going, buddy. Just push me. Question number five. Okay, he's our sacrifice, our life. I know I'm pushing it. I had a big old message here, but that's okay. That's okay. You can go online, check it out sometime. We got notes and stuff. God is good. Number six. Here's the big one. Say it with me. Say it with me. Say it with me. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? When you start getting crazy in the barnyard and you're running away from the wings, go to Romans 8, 28, start right there and read right to the end and see if you don't get your senses back and get back under those wings where you belong. This is a great truth, man. Life is full of pressure. The list shows the intensity right here. And all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, or any other creature shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's thank the Lord for the message. We're done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Boom. Strong word today. Amen. Let's get on up our feet. I hate it when I run out of time. It is what it is. Hey, you got a truckload today. That's a, that, we loaded a truck right there today. That'll stop suicide. That'll stop going back to the bottle. This is powerful stuff I just read. Y'all hear me or not? Say, this is huge. This is unbelievable. It's crazy. But you got to believe it, man. You got to believe it. Okay? And I can't believe it for you. I can get up and scream at you and holler at you and watch you jump when I raise my voice. But you got to believe it. But would you at least take it from me? Through the intensity of me screaming at you that I'm serious? Would you receive his word today? Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for a good morning. Thank you for this great time in the Word. Help us, Lord, me included big time, not to be stupid. Not to run around the barnyard. But to come back under those wings. As believers, Lord, you know we do this. I do this. Thank you for your love. Thank you for scriptures like this that help us. Lord, I pray for people today. If they died, Lord, they, they're not going to heaven. They're not going to heaven. Because they haven't put their faith in you and you alone. They might be looking at their circumstances in their life. How you let them down, God. You let them down. I pray today they'll humble themselves. I pray they'll realize their good works is as filthy rags. I pray they'll know that church is full of sinners. That includes them, and that ain't going to save them. And I pray today they'll run, they'll run, they'll run to you today. I pray right now, Father, not one in this room will leave lost. Not one watching online will leave lost. Not one of us will be so arrogant and so ungrateful that we won't today put our total trust, our total faith in you, Jesus. It's up to us, Lord. I pray right now, not one of us will miss it. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, can I lead you in a prayer where today you'll say yes to Jesus Christ? Would you pray with me, Lord Jesus? I know I am a sinner. And I ask your forgiveness today. 
And Jesus, I want you to know today that I will, I will come to you right now. I'm doing it. And best to know how. I want you to know I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you're the only way to God the Father. And I put my total trust and faith in you. Not in myself, not in some preacher, not in some church. But in you, the Son of the living God. Save me today. Save me today. I know you love me. I appreciate it. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would raise hands and say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today, and I meant that from the bottom of my heart, Pastor. I never know who's here and who. Thank you. God bless you and quite a few of you. That's what I did today, period. Thank you. Lord, thank you for a great morning. Help us as we run out of here. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry I do this to y'all. Y'all going to have a stroke on Sunday, ain't you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Y'all know that's the number one thing people criticize me for. He just 